YouTube's live, Blog Talk Radio's live, Facebook is live, and we welcome all y'all for being here. Now, um, we have um, we have an interesting opportunity tonight um, to see. Uh, what the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit move is all about. And um, I, uh, hold on. <laughs> now I'm, if you if you're wondering about me just kind of sitting there not talking I am home everything's okay Everything's good. We're in really good shape. It's all good. Everything's good. How are you guys doing? Are you good? All right. Um, I um, I have uh, the opportunity tonight to share with you the Holy Spirit Conference um, from Midland, Dr. Barclay's Holy Spirit Conference, which would be really good. And um, I, don't, I don't know. I knew it was this week. And for some reason, I didn't think I could do a watch party or I had been talking about it all last week. And I just don't what I don't know. I did not even think about it at all. But um, I would like for you to be able to be a part of what a Holy Spirit conference is like, which is kind of what it's like when I'm, I see the um, uh, the tent meeting being like. Now, I'm not going to go there yet. I'm kind of watching to see where things are at here and how this flow goes. I have a message about the Holy Spirit. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And then uh, when I sat down here at the desk, Lord, oh, my goodness, it popped up. And we're singing and people falling out and praying for folks. And so uh, thank you. Thank you for being here, thank you for being a part. Thank you for all you do to help this thing go like it needs to go. Amen. In the name of Jesus, somebody say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, uh, how did everybody's day go today? Me had a great day. We had a really good day. We. We had a really, really, really good day. Now, there we go. And um, the preliminary uh, praise and worship and everything's over. And then pastor usually talks and greets people and all that kind of stuff. So that's not as important to us uh, to be able to watch. If if the spirit of God starts moving, then I'm going to come back to it. And I got a watch party all set up that we can go over and be a part of it. Here's the thing. If you've never been a part of a move of God like this, um, th this this is one of those experiences of life that you just you got to have. And this is what I hope. This is what our tent meeting is going to be all about. And so, after a little while here, we'll send we'll go back over there and see what God's doing. Now, let me um, let me pause this. And let me go here, turn this on over here, turn this there. That way I can see what's happening. So I'm not caught in the leg. All right, now I'm back over here. Hey, look at, I got some people here that I can talk to. <laughs> Well, you know, 
it's an interesting day that we live in because in order to be able to share something like this with everybody in my church back in West Branch, we'd have had to have a satellite dish installed. We'd have had to have all kinds of equipment or invite everybody over to somebody's house, you know, that could get it in. And to think that every person now in this day has access to all this kind of amazing information and impartation it's just a wonderful place where we are right now. And I'll tell you what, uh, the, the uh, level of anointing that God wants uh, in this day is absolutely amazing. And so let me just catch up on the com comments. Uh, Robert Mulderman's here. Uh, Mike and Shannon, Brother Dan, Sister Gwen, Mary Pastor Rick's here. Ah, Wilma Tony's here. Three cheers for Wilma. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. 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 Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Kelly Delkert's here. Good to have you with us tonight, Kelly. Good to have you. I need to hear you here to counteract the negative in my life. Oh, garden is well fertilized. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> That's what they say. The grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence. There's just more fertilizer over there. <laughs> and it, it's probably smelly. And um, the other the other side of the fence might be a septic tank. You don't ever know. So, you know, you got to be careful, careful jumping over the other side of the fence. But, um. Uh, I just want to, you know, say thank you for once again for the day off. Thank you, Sister Sister Gwen, Brother Dave, for last night. And hopefully you were inspired to know some, some more about John the Baptist, the first great revivalist. And um, I still didn't find out how many years John the Baptist preached for. Um, but it's okay. I, I, um, that information will get to us, and then it will change our lives. Now, um, look at Phyllis Raymond. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. Now, you know, last week we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get back there. That's what we're going to talk about this week. We've got our new verse of the month out, and um, uh, the month of March is the month for angels. All right? And so I'm going to share that verse of the month with you now. Um, and so, uh, right now I'm going to share the verse of the month with you. And right now I have found the verse of the month and I am going to share it with you. Uh, we have all of our platforms up, blog talk radios up, uh, Facebook live is up, YouTube live is up and we're glad to have, um, uh, all of you here. Now, let's see how it turned out. It didn't turn out too bad. Look at that. See, Facebook, you know how to make it right. Just do it right all the time. Now, I've put the verse of the month in the comments for you so that you can read it together with us. And um, I, I encourage you to do that. This is, a, this is a verse that you should be studying all month long. And just speaking it loud out day out loud every day, saying, "Father, um, evidently this is what you told Pastor, and so I'm going to just hang on to it and I'm going to speak these verses." Now, this verse of the month is um, actually about five verses, all put in one about angels. I don't understand why that's in there. Well, it looked like it was right, and then it wasn't. All right, there we go. Let's pin it. There we go. And everybody read it out loud with us. Starting at the top. Angels all around us. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, 
to an innumerable host of angels. His angels, his spirits, his ministers, all flames of fire who excel in strength, who do his will, heeding the voice of his word. <laughs> I took that out of mind. Can somebody please get the V out of it? <laughs> Doing his pleasure, protecting and prospering his children. Now, you might say, Pastor, that's not a verse of scripture. No, it's actually five verses all put together in one make one statement about the angels of the Lord that are with you, that surround you, protect you, and keep you safe every single day of your life. Now, here's the cool thing about it. Uh, I gave you the references there so that you can study them. Hebrews 12, 22. Um, Hebrews 1, 7. And then Psalm 103, 19 through 22. And... Um, you know, I, I didn't add it then, but I can see to add it right now. And that's the verse out of Psalms, uh, Psalm 91. And that whole chapter is about the angels of the Lord surrounding you and protecting you. Those that live in the secret place of the Most High, dwelling under the under the, um, the, the shadow of the Almighty. And God's blessing being on you. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's just a whole lot of work there. So we'll grab that another time and we'll put Psalm 91 in there and we'll add that along with it because Psalm 91 is a psalm that is very specifically about the angels of the Lord surrounding you and protecting you and keeping you safe. So this is our verse of the month. And um, I encourage you to uh, study it, memorize it. You might say, Pastor, it's not a verse. No, it's five verses. So study it, memorize it. Um, from the other other chapters and what you're going to learn if you grab this confession and make it every day you're going to be making a bold declaration that the angels of the Lord surround you protect you and keep you safe it's those bold declarations that cause things to happen in the lives of the of the believers every single day of our life and I encourage you to um I encourage you to continually work in this process and make these bold declarations every single day of your life. And, you know, we have a bunch that we do. We have like, I don't know, we've probably got 25 different declarations that we do, confessions. And um, uh, what does that mean, Pastor? That means that we are making a declaration from God's holy word, where we take it four or five verses about a subject, maybe seven, ten verses. We could it, we create it into a, a declaration statement that we can declare as an ambassador of the cross. And um, you'll take some ands and, and prepositional phrases and stuff out, but you're making that word of God become very applicable to your life. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of the Lord. So what you're actually doing is meditating that word right down inside your life. And that makes a very, very big uh, difference in all of our lives because it's when we make these bold declarations as ambassadors that things really begin to change. Now, some of the rest of you ain't going to know what this means, but I got to communicate with Brother Robert for just a second. Um, what I'm going to have you do with that, Robert, what I'm looking for is to have the names of the fallen for this day. You know, like today's would be for March the 2nd from all those years. Now, that's a lot of work until we find the right website and the right Facebook page. Because there's a Facebook page and I was looking for it today and I couldn't find it. They must have changed their name. And then... What you would do is just grab that day and make sure I got them in a form where I can get to it. And what that turns out to be then is every day we get to honor the troops of the day who passed on that day. Now, listen to this statement. Um, I've been asking for somebody to help me with this. Brother Robert said he would. Sister Shannon found some 
um, really good uh, information that we needed for it. And so all of us working together, we're going to put this together. Now watch what happens. With these names, now we'll be praying for the families who, like today, on March the 2nd, are faced with that day when their loved one uh, fell in the line of battle. And we will literally be saying their name out loud and standing in the gap and making up the heads for those people. Can you see the power of that? Yeah. 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 And, and the honor, the power, yeah. and the intercession and standing in the gap that we'll be doing. So uh, we'll keep working on it. I know that database that you got, Robert, uh, that's going to probably be about impossible for you because it's not, it's not put in, and um, uh, order by date is put in order by their names, alphabetical order. So that thing's going to be all over the, what, the page and you'll spend a lot of time on that. There is a, a Facebook page that um, posts the pictures of the fallen every day. I used to be a part of the page and they obviously have changed their name because I couldn't find it today. Yeah. But anyways, and if they don't have it up, then guess what we can do? You and I can say, yeah, we'll take care of that. And we'll find a way to make it happen and be that blessing to the United States of America and to these families just because we love our troops and we honor them every day. Here, It's like some some people have said to me, you know, Pastor, you, you sure talk a lot about that. And there's other people that have lost a loved one. I know. I understand that. And it's serious. It's very serious. Um, the assignment that the father has given me is to take care of the families of the fallen because there's nobody who's paid a dearer price for the freedoms of America than those people. And they don't just pay that price the day that the, that their family's buried. They pay that price every single day. And that's a severe price of freedom that we cannot in any way um, minimize. We must very specifically, do our part to honor them. Now, let's see how we do. That in, you know, Robert, we're going to have to make uh, some more phone calls on it, but I just want to let you know the gist of it so you can be working on that and you can see that plan. Now, Captain Bryce Evers, welcome, sir. I'm not sure um, about a captain. But I know when a captain shows up, you're supposed to salute. And I jump up out of my seat and salute you, but I'll mess everything up. So <laughs> God bless you, sir. God bless you. And um, bless your family. Whatever it is, wherever it is you serve and are captain, we honor you today right here. Um, been in that position. Understand what happens. And um, we honor you in it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, what else is happening with everybody? I see we have Mikey Mike with us tonight. And and Phil Phil's here. What's her name? <laughs> Phil Phil's here. Good to have you, fellas. <laughs> and Donnie Donnie's here. Yep, I saw her and Chan Chan's here. And Brother Dan and Sister Gwen's here. God bless you guys. We love you. All right. And um, Cal Cal's here. She's here tonight. That's good, Cal Cal. Good to see you. <laughs> and Robbie. And Robbie Robbie and Wilma. <laughs> well, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Just some good family fun. What you're going to find here tonight is we got a great big old huge family here. And... Uh, we get together and we act like family. We laugh and we, we have fun and we we joke with each other and we tease each other. We all help each other stand up together at the same time. Love, could you go get that the the little COF board? Yeah. I want to show you what Sister Leanne and I was working on um, on Sunday and Monday um, on our day off. We have been, of course, we've been fasting like you guys have. And um, I just want the, the back one. 
There you go. And so we've been working on a vision board so that we can share it with you. And we can take us from where we are to the next level of where God wants us to be. And so we've been working on this. And this is one of the first things I wanted to show you this week um, was some of the things that God's given us to, to work on. Now, well, let me see here. Got to get the cameras all in the right place. Everybody, everybody check this out. Let's see. I got to go this way. There we go. This is our community of faith vision board. Isn't that cool? Some of you helped me the other day. I was asking, uh, yesterday I was asking for, uh, for you to put a verse in that is what you see the community of faith that is in your life. Now, let me get this over here. No, I'll put it right here. I'm going to put it right there because that way I can read it to you. All right. And um, this is just going to be a, a kind of a, uh, a an awesome, amazing. Just hang on to your half band night because who knows where all it's going to go. I, I, I want to say this to you. God is getting us ready for this tent meeting that's coming. And you got to realize this. When you get to a tent meeting, and it's a Holy Ghost tent meeting, then um, things happen. All right? People show up that need deliverance. Demons probably going to get cast out. People are going to be healed. I expect people to come out of wheelchairs and not need crutches. I thoroughly expect signs, wonders, and miracles to happen um, very, 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 very specifically. And um, so one of the things you got to get used to is God moving in something that's outside of structure. Yeah. All right. Now, I, I love structure and I love order. There ain't nobody that loves order more than me. So here's the thing that we're going to continually see. God's going to give us opportunities to stretch ourselves into a new a new part of our life. Um, there's going to be people come to the tent meeting that are not going to be like you at all and may bring up a bad memory from your past. And you and I got to be able to help them. And that means no fear. That means no preconceived ideas about anybody. And when you walk in this door of the tent, that means God brought you here. And we, our determination is you leave free. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? All right. So here we go. Let, let's just do a couple things here first. Um, we have um, a name here. Robert found a name. That's good, brother. You, you're doing the work. See how everybody's important? Now, this isn't this isn't close to everyone's heart. But this is very close to Robert's heart. This is very close. And Robert will grab this and make this happen in this ministry. And as he grows and develops in God, God's going to promote him to a place of leadership in this. And the rest of you that are veterans, God will give you an opportunity to be a blessing to people. And um, I encourage you to look at the community of faith and say, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm going to be a part of everything that's going on. And once again, I'm not getting comments. Um, your thing has been pinned for a while. Is I that just why? unpinned that, yeah. Is that... No, I have to do the work. <laughs> you have to pin it and it? Yes. I, I, I appreciate you trying to help me love by doing it, but it seems that it's important for me to do it so that it'll disappear and get out of the way. 
So everybody pause for a minute while Facebook gets caught up to the modern day of pin and unpin. There we go. Now I can see you guys' statements, or your, your comments. Hello. God bless you guys. Now, what time is it? Boy, we, we, got, we got things so wound up tonight that um, we got to stop for a minute and say, Lord, help us get some order here and, um, and uh, be a blessing. Now, I want to honor our, uh, this, this staff sergeant. And so, if you will, uh, join together with me. And we will rise, say the Pledge of Allegiance, have a moment of silence, and we're going to honor this man here today that Brother Robert found for us. Render your honor. Let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now tonight, we honor... Army Staff Sergeant Paul Laterni from Illinois. And we honor the lives of every one of his brothers and sisters who fell in battle on this day. And now we'll have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action and still serving Today, this moment of silence is in honor of those who paid the last full measure of devotion with their lives. It's in honor of those who willingly gave their life in service of this country, did their time of duty, protected and defended this great nation. And it's in honor of those family members who've stood alongside of these who are wounded in their spirit, soul and body. And these who have paid the last full measure of devotion. This moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence begins now. And now join with me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America, my home sweet home. Thank you, Brother Robert, for doing that search for us immediately. And now pause for a moment.
not steal our joy any longer. All right. Now, um, I am, um, I am, um, <laughs> I am dealing with technology in my face. All right, here we go. Um, Um, I, we have, uh, the opportunity tonight to, um, be a part of the Holy Spirit conference in Midland, Michigan. And, um, I have had it on here now for about 40 minutes and just been seeking the father about if this is something that we should join and be a part of. Now, some of you might say, Pastor, what is it when you join and be a part of it? Well, we have a watch party already set up, and we would go over and be a part of what's going on at the Holy Spirit Conference. And so um, I, I truly believe that the Father would have us be a part of this tonight. Uh, it's running tonight and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Uh, there's a morning session also. And if you'd like to be a part of that morning session, I would recommend that. It starts at 1030 Eastern and runs till about noon. Uh, it's a very, very powerful session, usually all leadership material and very, very much a blessing to you. Um, and so I would I would encourage some of you, if you have the opportunity to be a part of it, that you do that. Um, and um I just been sitting here letting my spirit deal with it because this is a surprise to everybody. And I don't like surprises. I like everything to flow and be smooth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I just been kind of watching what's going on at the Holy Spirit conference to see because pastors always got a bunch of uh, announcements and everything. So, um, I want to talk about this for a second. Is that going to work, Jesus? It's not going to work. All right. Can you hear this? I'm going. No, he just quit preaching. I'm sorry. I told God I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Some of you are like, Pastor, we've never seen you like this before. <laughs> What's going on with you? Well, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm working. I, I, I believe in you guys and I believe in what we're doing. And, um, I, um, I don't, the thing I don't, I, the thing we can't do is just sit around and listen to a bunch of announcements that won't help me. But so, you know what, I'm just going to say, we're just going to scratch that at this point. And if God starts moving there, uh, I see something different happening. We're going to do that. Right now, I want us to move right now into the community of faith. And I'm going to read what I have on our vision sheet, all right, of what God has done here in the community of faith. Now, I, I thank you for your grace with me tonight. I'm not confused at all about who we are or where we're going. I have the opportunity to share with something with you that I've enjoyed for 25 years. And I want to share that. However, I want all y'all to be with us. And um, I gave nobody any notice on it. And to me, that's uh, that's just one of those things I don't like to do. So I'm going to show this to you. And we're going to deal with this for a while. Watch this. This is our community of faith vision sheet. And um, I can't, I don't have cameras good enough to make it all available. So... What I'm going to do now is just read it to you. So this is the community of faith. Who are we, the community of faith? Uh, we are an international family 
of mountain moving believers. Everybody say international family. International family. When you think about this family and who we are and what we got going on, we got believers in Australia and Africa and Europe and Asia and China and uh, South America, uh, North America, Canada. We got believers all over the world. We are an international family of mountain moving believers. Somebody type it in with me. I love this family. What did he say? That's because there's no, there's no comments because we're quiet in the back pew. No cake, no coffee, and no cookies. It's just water. Hang in there. Hang in there. Uh, we'll be done fasting soon. Haven't you just enjoyed the fast? Wasn't it wonderful? Yeah, this is actually the last day of the fast. So wasn't that just wonderful to be a part of the fast? Amen. And I'm sure God has ministered to you. And, um, you know, there you go. That's good. See there? I love this family. International family of believers. I love this family. Now, the next thing is a growing community of faith. Everybody say it. We are a growing community of faith. We are a growing community of faith. Amen. We are a growing community of faith. What I think is cool is if you look in the last month, we've added um, Sister Wilma and her and Jim, and in the last couple months, Sunday and um, and Chris, and we just have new people coming all the time. I got to stop naming names because that just doesn't ever work good. We got new people coming all the time. You got one? And we actually uh, we went today and registered a name with the Secretary of State, and we are now called the Community of Faith here in North Dakota. Officially, officially today. All right. So somebody shout, "Woo Glory be to God!" All right. And so, uh, number one, we are an international family of believers. Look at there, Julian and Bamala posted. I love this family all the way from Malaysia. All right. We are a growing community of faith. Listen this statement. We gathered together to study and believe the word for what it actually says to be free from religiosity. I know I wrote these out last night, love. <laughs> and live by faith. I'll say it again. We gather together to study and believe the word for what it actually says. And be free of religiosity to live by faith and live by faith. I'll say it again. I know some of you are typing, so I'm going to keep saying it. We gather together. Let's get this put in a couple times. We gathered together to study and believe the word for what it actually says and to be free of religiosity and live by faith. Hallelujah. I, I agree, Rebecca. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. And then we created the um, prayer time at noon. And uh, we established, this is our next one. Wait, did anybody get that put in there? No, we gathered together to study and, and believe the word. For what it actually says. Wow. To be free of religiosity and live by faith. Wow. 
I declare all technologies function properly. We gather together to study and believe the word for what it actually says to be free of religiosity and live by faith. When you look back at what we did and who, why we're here, that's exactly what happened to us. And guess what? We got free from a bunch of religiosity, but we didn't get free from God. We didn't get free from the fivefold ministry. We didn't get free from healing, miracles, signs, wonders. We didn't get free from all the stuff that you need for your Christian life. We got free of the religiosity, which is killing faith. Yeah. Because every time you get into religiosity, rather than into the bold walk of faith, it's going to kill what actually produces faith in your life. Because religiosity is the doctrines of a man. Can you pin something so I can have my comments back? And then, no, that wasn't working. And then unpin it for me, please. All right. The next one is we established a power grid of prayer for the United States of America and the body of Christ around the world. We established a power grid of prayer for the United States of America and the body of Christ around the world. And if you don't realize it, that's what happens every time we show up for our noon prayer. Glory be to God. I agree, Wilma. <laughs> it's good to see Wilma shouting over there. It is. Wave your hanky too, Wilma. It's all right. We don't care. And every now and then just get up and dance around the house. We do that here. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great experience. We established a power grid of prayer for the United States of America and the body of Christ. Hey, there we go. Now it's part, starting to pop up. I tell you what, I declare our technology works right every single day, every time we're here in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's the, that's the three, four statements off the top about why the community of faith started. Now, we gathered together and we started on Facebook Live. If you go back and look at any of those early uh, videos, please don't judge us. We were all growing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, please don't judge me because I was growing. All right. I, I, I told God I would never do what I'm doing right now. And yet look at what he's done with all of us as we've come together. All right. And, um, and the, in the beginning of 2020, God gave me a, a plan for Blog Talk Radio, because that's where I was at was Blog Talk Radio. And it's got seven points, and I'm going to share it with you right now tonight. I'm going to share it right now. Because I want you to be able to see who it is the community of faith is and how we got here. All right? Now, in my notepad... Yeah, that's it, Shannon. We all had to find our place. And look at the places we found. This is what's exciting to me. There's a bunch of you yet that say, well, I'm just here studying and learning. And there's not really anything for me to do. I guarantee you everybody here has something that you can help us do every single day. Yeah. And if you, if you might say, Pastor, well, what in the world can I do? Call me. Call me because you got gifts, talents, and abilities that God sent here to this group of believers that we need here. About a hundred and extra 20 pounds of growing. <laughs> Some people were blessed to only gain 20 pounds during the, the pandemic and others grew a little bit more. All right. But I want to share this with you because on uh, January, hold on, let me get the date here. Somewhere there's a notepad that is going to be right. 
Amen. I stand in agreement. <laughs> Wow. Now, you might say, Pastor, why don't you have things in order? You cannot imagine what this is like sitting here. Nobody's what? I said that nobody said it. All right. Well, here we go. Yeah, I didn't find it. That is just really something. Okay, here it is. January 4th is the day that I got this. All right. And uh, I took these notes and I want you to see exactly what it is that God said to do for this and look at how it turned out. Okay. Number one, effectively meet meeting people's needs and propelling them to their eternal destiny. It's not right now. Number one, effectively meeting people's needs and propelling them to their eternal destiny. Effectively meeting people's needs and propelling them to their eternal destiny. Well, I tell you, if some of you right now, if you might be like, Pastor, what can I do around here? You can start praying about an hour before the service so this situation doesn't happen right here. That's a good idea, Mary. <laughs> I've actually thought the same thing before. <laughs> well, Mary, I don't know what those songs are, so you will have to um, put a song list uh, together and say, uh, these are the ones I want you to sing. So number one, effectively meeting people's needs and propelling them to their eternal destiny. How many of you feel today more like you're able to see your eternal destiny than ever before in your life? I know. I know we definitely do. And um, <clears throat> I thank you guys for being here. We all had to find our place. There you are, Shannon. And that's right there in number one of them. Right there. And and look, you know, some of you may not know what she has helped me in such an amazing process to um, organize the past of what we've done and put it together. And it's nothing more than watching the video that's there. And then uh, putting some notes to it, and then, bam, there you are. And, and it's an amazing thing. And if you got time, seriously, if you got time, you can get involved and, and help Shannon get that done because it's a serious issue we got to do. Now, for everybody that wants to know, the Holy Spirit Conference is already closed for tonight. So oh, if, if, to, if they're an hour earlier, and if you got time, seriously, if you got time, you 
can get involved. <laughs> Jesus, help us. <laughs> Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody just slow down a little bit. Number two. <laughs> Learning to walk in the righteousness of God, producing the joy of being one with the Father. I literally wrote this in January of last year. I didn't look at it much at all throughout the year because every time we opened this thing up, the Holy Spirit moved and we followed his leadership. And look at what we're doing. Number two is learning to walk in the righteousness of God, producing the joy of being one with the Father. Well, you know, Mary said that I have a beautiful, peaceful songs that soothe the soul. But what Mary don't realize is I, I like really screaming rock and roll music. <laughs> Number two, learning to walk in the righteousness of God, producing the joy of being one with the Father. Now, number three, preach the gospel of the kingdom. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you too. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you too. And if you want a verse on that, um, yeah, that's Acts uh, 10, 38. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting when we look back what the Holy Spirit said for us to do, and then we did it, and look at where we are sitting here today. You might say, you know, Pastor, um, you kind of had this planned all along. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't have it planned all along. I, I didn't. I told God I wouldn't do it. <clears throat> we just were gathering together, having a good time. And um, uh, hold on. <laughs> and look what God's done. We got people all over the world. We've got you guys flowing in the gifts of God like you've never flowed before. All of us are doing things we've never done. And my goodness, we got miracles and signs and wonders. Exactly what you see in the book of Acts is happening right here in this gathering of believers. And it's amazing how it happens every day. Come on, Robert. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Shannon, it never goes well telling father no. No, it doesn't. No. No. Like the one guy said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> that is a good statement. <laughs> if you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are. And yeah, I'd be like, oh, 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 oh that's what you was gonna do. How about you do this over here? Oh. And he just tells you. If you do this over here, you're going to see some mighty miracles. I'm not, I'm not sure how many times our brother Mike Tony went to a Bible bookstore and bought um, a Spanish Bible for a lady. I don't know how many times he did that in his life, really. I'm serious about it. And um, it's not like I know Mike, like real deep. Uh, I knew him a little bit, but when I knew him, he was a biker. And, um, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like it would be the thing he'd be doing every day. And yet, because he has learned to hear God's voice, not only was he able to hear that so he would go do it, but when he did it right in his room, an angel showed up and brought another Bible. 
Huh? One that matched the other one. So that the two lady friends could have communication about the same thing. Say it. I love the gospel of the kingdom. I love the gospel of the kingdom. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you. And he anointed you with the Holy Spirit and with power. Now watch. Number four. Bringing the greatest breakthrough in life to everyone who meets us. Bringing the greatest breakthrough in life to everyone who meets us. Now, you might say, Pastor, you're using one of those, um, what do they call those words? Uh, uh, demonstrative words. Hey. The greatest, what's that word called? It's, you know, they call it that kind of a word. It's greatest is called a. Descriptive. <laughs> you might say, wait, Pastor, this is the greatest breakthrough. It, it's it's a word like expletive, but it's a word of uh, ex, 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 it's coming. Anyways, you think about the greatest breakthrough that any of us could have in life. It's revelation. If you got all the money you needed to pay off all your debts, that'd be a good thing. That'd be a breakthrough. That'd be really great. But if you got money and you didn't get revelation, then you're going to get done and every, all the debts will be paid. And you're like, now what are we doing? Now, please do that. I think everybody will live debt free. If there's ever a day in the history of America, you live debt free, make it now. Because, uh, wow, these goofballs, let me say it, those wicked men and women who uh, have set out to destroy America, they don't have a lick of sense. They don't even know that there is licking sense. All right. Bunch of stupid morons right there. Extraordinary. Thank you, shit. And Wilma, that's a good word. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bringing the greatest, ex most extraordinary breakthrough in life to everyone who meets us. Why? Because when they meet us, they meet, they meet the Father. Amen. Say it with me. You can type it in if you want. When people meet me, they will meet the Father. Now, I, you know, I have throughout my life um, been in, in churches that I thought I'd like to have anybody here. But um, when you really think about it, it's not the church you want to be a part of. It's a group of a community of believers who have come together for one purpose, and that is to know the Father. Amen. Yeah. Because when you know the Father, according to Jesus, greater works than he did are you going to do in his name. Yeah. Nobody, nobody had typed the words in that I can see, but of course, I'm, I am so far in the lag, it is absolutely amazing. When people meet me, they will meet the Father. Oh. All right? What number are we on? Five. Five. Demonstrate that all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Dem it's number five. Demonstrate that all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. How many of them, Pastor? All of them. I'm telling you right now, all of them. Now, up until now, I haven't opened up a verse of scripture. But I can tell that some of you are like, Pastor, did you lose your Bible? You haven't even opened your Bible one time yet tonight. So I'll just open my Bible. And we'll just let it fall open to whatever page it does. And the page that it fell open to was the exact one I needed. Second Peter chapter one. Everybody go there for a minute. Demonstrate that all the promises of God in him, Jesus, are yes and amen. This is what we were working on this weekend, putting it all in order, making a bunch of 
vision sheets and mission statement sheets so that we can break this thing down and get everybody plugged in somewhere so that everybody feels like they're doing a part. Uh, Donna, Donna Schubeck has really just been an amazing blessing. I'm telling you right now, Donna, you ain't seen nothing yet from what God's going to do. It's amazing. Amen. It's amazing. First Peter, second Peter one, verse one through four. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, that's number two. That's number two on this list. Learning to walk in the righteousness of God. All right. So you're a saint and you're a partaker of the righteousness of God. Verse number two, which is going to cause grace and peace to be multiplied to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. In the knowledge of, and it's not just brainular stuffing of your akabesa. It is revelation knowledge coming to your life. Somebody shout it. I've got a revelation. I've got a revelation. Woo! I've got a revelation. And what is that? God wants to make his temple in me and will make me everything I got to be so that he can do that very thing. Amen. Amen. He's not in heaven saying, well, boy, I see if you can figure it out someday down the road. I might tell you a few things too. That's not our God. That might have been Uncle Hank or Uncle Joe, but that ain't God. God wants you to see everything you need every single day. And that's why the month of February was the month about praying in the Holy Ghost. Because when you get that prayer language happening, all of a sudden you get to the perfect will of God and you continually find yourself walking and living and dwelling in the perfect will of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, look at this. Look at verse three. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, would that be closed? Um, well, yes, it would. All things that pertain to life would be your clothes. Oh. Yes. Sorry, I was reading. <laughs> uh, we are not sitting here naked, so just so you know, we do have clothes, and it pertains to life. Somebody give God a big glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, listen. The boys in the back row having coffee, cookies, and cake. That pertains to life. Look at what this verse says. He's given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You got both parts of your life there. You got life part and you got godliness part. So God's got you covered in every area. Somebody just shout, God's got me covered in every area. If you haven't learned the, the community of faith yell, then, you know, just try one yourself right in the house. If you have a spouse or mate or family there and they might be freaked out, just warn them first before you do that COF yell. <laughs> so they don't come right out of the chair and smack you in the head. <laughs> Look at what it says. His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. You got to see this. You got to see this. Now, if one, two, and three wasn't good enough, look at verse four. Look at this. By which have been given unto us exceedingly. Great, precious promises. Say it with me. Exceedingly, Exceedingly great, great, 
and precious promises. Wait, not just a little dabble, do you? Exceedingly great and precious promises. What's that mean? What we're on right now is, is number five, demonstrate that all the promises of God are yes and amen. All right? God is not going to give you just a little dabble, do you? Which is a whole is what a whole lot of denominational people want you to believe about Holy Ghost, about healing, about provision. Oh, wait, they think it about every bit of your life. God will just give you enough to make it through. You can survive on this earth. And then when you really want, you're going to really be blessed when you get to heaven. And that is not what that verse says. These verses are talking about you and me right here on this earth. All things that pertain to life, that's where you're living right now. Godliness, that's where you're living right now. In heaven, it's, it's all done. It's all done. You're there. Godliness is everywhere. So these verses are not for heaven. These are for here. Look at this. That through these, you might be partakers of the divine nature. Say it. My nature has changed. My nature has changed. Say it. I have the nature of God. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse number 17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. That means your nature changed at the cross. Say it out loud with me. My nature changed at the cross. My nature changed at the cross. And in so doing, you escape the corruption that's in this world through lust. My nature changed at the cross and I got the divine nature of God. How can Jesus give you his righteousness without you getting his nature? Your only challenge for the rest of your life is to learn the word of God of exactly how big and amazing and wonderful it is to walk with God. The only thing that's left for you is, is, is to... Uh, that was easy to say. Did I get it out? Did everybody get it? No. All right, let's try it again. The only thing that's left for you is to learn the word of God. Study and show yourself approved unto God that all of these promises just... And you get more and more revelation, more and more revelation until all of a sudden you're a walking, living, breathing book of almighty God, the power of God everywhere you go. And no matter who you're with or no matter what you're doing, you got to see signs, wonders and miracles. Two people in the state of Michigan who are two of the most powerful people in the state when it came to healing and miracles was Charles and Francis Hunter. They lived up by Traverse City, Michigan, between Cadillac and Traverse City. Charles and Francis Hunter were known all over the world for miracles, signs, and wonders, and they weren't even pastors of a church. They were just two, just a husband and wife believer team that, that studied the word and all of a sudden got the revelation. Hold it. God Almighty is big on the inside of me, and I can do miracles, signs, and wonders everywhere. And listen, Charles and Francis Hunter would sit you down, and I, you would see people's legs grow right in front of your eyes. I saw it happen. I saw it happen one time in my own eyes. They literally just said, get up here and watch. And there's a lady that was sitting on the front pew of the church, and he held her feet out. And he's like, look at these feet. And it was like, it was major shorter. One was major shorter than the other. And he's like, do you have back problems all the time? Do you have knee problems all the time? Have you ever gone and had nothing done with it? No. And literally, I watched that ankle just pull out, and, he, and she stood up, and for the first time, stood up straight in her whole life. I saw it with these eyes. Wait, I'm not telling you a story somebody else told. I saw it with these eyes. Exceeding great and precious promises 
whereby you might become a partaker of the divine nature of God. Can somebody shout glory? Hallelujah. To, you know, like three or four or whatever it is, two times ago, Saturday night, I guess. Robert called in, told the story, falling down on the ice and his leg going sideways. Well, I'm going to tell my story right now. What are we on? Nine or seven or eight or what are we on? Six? six. All right. Number six. I'll tell my story in a minute. Help every believer move from glory to glory, from grace to grace, faith to faith, and from grace to grace. No, she didn't cry. She That lady didn't cry. She jumped up off the front pew running and dancing. She was jumping and screaming just like the, the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. Just like uh, the guy at the gate of Jerusalem when Peter and John said, come on, boy, stand up. And he went to leap and jump and dance. And why? Because you're set free. Set free. Set free, set free, set free, set free. Number six, help every believer move from glory to glory, faith to faith, and grace to grace. How many of you feel like you're growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, signified by raising your hand? Everybody put a hand in there. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Dan Cottle, Sister Gwen, they're with us again tonight. Hello. We love you guys. Sunday guys is with us. Amen. Mary Pastor Rick, Phyllis K. Raymond, Rebecca, who's that? This, oh, that was me. I posted. Wilma Tony's here. Mike and Shannon's here. I'm just checking, making sure that somehow we keep up with everybody that's here tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every help every believer move from glory to glory, faith to faith, and grace to grace. Every this is what's amazing about God. Remind me to tell my story about the factory. All right. All right. God knows where every one of us is. It is impossible for one human being, a pastor like me, to be able to figure out where everybody's at and absolutely spend all the time with everybody to fix everybody to be perfect just like they all need to be. But you know who knows us all? The Holy Spirit of God. And I don't know how, except I do know how. But every time we come here, the Holy Spirit ministers to everybody in your own personal way like you need it. This is like Bible college. If you've never had good Bible college, this is one. What we've done. Um, there's no classes. There's no extracurricular reading. And there's not been any. Been, been any. <laughs> there's not been any pop quizzes, although I could give you one. And um, I didn't make you memorize any verses. I'll bet you a bunch of you have memorized a lot of verses. You might not have them exactly quoted, exactly chapter, you know, exactly all the punctuation and everything, but you can quote a whole, bu a whole bunch more scripture today than what you did when you first started. And that's by the design of Almighty God. That he gave me on January 4th and January uh, 16th, uh, 2020. Number seven, help every believer find their place and function in their grace. Number seven, help every believer find their place and function in your grace. There is something here for everybody to do. And when you leave this gathering of believers, you can go out into this your community and you can change your community by your faith and your words and your actions and your efforts. And everybody that you, everybody you help come to God. Everybody you help come to God is welcome to come here and grow in God and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, those are the seven points. I'll have them on a, on a note that we can put them all together. I'll have them on a piece of paper. All right. And uh, we'll put them on the website. 
we're going to put this stuff up on the website. And uh, we're just going to keep making this thing work. Why? Because this is designed by God to help people stand up, grow up, be developed, become confident in who they are in God, and then go into their community and change that community. Come on. Come on. Come on, Rebecca, uh, Phyllis. I, I had too many, I had too many names coming to me right there. Uh, help every believer become closer to God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're right. That's one of the things that this gathering of believers is all about. Because I want you, number one, to relax when it comes to um being freaked out about filled with the Holy Spirit. Relax. Let God do it. And then quit quit, quit striving to be what you already are. Amen. Quit striving to be what you already are. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness should come very easy to you. You might say, Pastor, Righteousness don't come easy to me at all. Well, I'm glad you said that. Send me an email. Tell me that. And I'll help you get to the point where righteousness comes easy to you. Because I want everybody that's in this gathering of believers, this community of faith, this ecclesia. I want every one of you to be so confident in your faith that you can go into your community and change anybody at any time. You'll no longer think about calling somebody else when you got to cast out a demon. You'll just walk up and say, you come out. Just get out. No, no, no. Get out. <laughs> Somebody's getting free right now. Everybody just type in, get out. Come on, come on. That's awesome. Some Somebody's getting free right now. That's really something. Matter of fact, put them, make them capital letters. Get out of Can you please pin me a comment on sure. Somebody, somebody online right now. Somebody. This is awesome. Look at everybody. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, Mary. That's awesome. Wait, that's how it ought to be. That's how it ought to be right there. All right. Well, Matoni, get up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know. This might be the first time some of you ever um, cast out a demon, but it's all right. Get your experience when you don't have to be freaked out about it. All right. See, guys, literally, this is how simple this is. Jesus said, I've given you power over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Get out of the child of God now in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. I got two stories I got to tell. Amen. Hey, everybody say it with Rebecca. Get Hey, Kathy Angaroni's here. Hello. Kathy. Woo! Look at the people that's here tonight. Phyllis Raymond, Kathy Angaroni, Sunday Geyser, Rebecca Smith, Shannon, Tony, Wilma, Mary Pastorick, Dan and Gwen and Dave and Gwen and Mike and Shannon and Robert. And, woo! We got us a family here tonight. Get out of our sister now, our brother now. You ready? Everybody say this over Kathy Angaroni. Say, we speak peace to the Kathy Angaroni family. Peace to Kathy Angaroni family. We Amen. speak peace in Rebecca's family. In Rebecca's family, we speak In peace. the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I I remember when I first started into this the spirit-filled life. And um, I really started getting free. I bound every devil that look, could even look like a devil. 
I don't believe there was a demon behind every bush, but I sure shook it to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why? He's given us power over all the power of the devil. We don't have to be afraid of it. Yep. Do, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Don't be mean. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be rude. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. If you see someone with a demon, step up there and take care of it. Sometimes you'll be in person and sometimes you'll just be standing back dealing with the, the situation. Now, I got two stories to tell. What a night. <laughs> that was probably the roughest start I've ever had tonight. <laughs> but there was so much information in front of me that uh, it was a deal. But we're, here we are. We're, we're moving right along now, aren't we? Now, did I give us the verses that's on the top of the page? First John 5, 4. I'm going to show this to you guys again. Cool looking. Can you see it? Yeah. It's kind of really pixelated, but. I love it. I think it's it's going to cause this thing to grow like crazy. These are our two verses. First John 5, 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. That's the first verse. And then Hebrews 11, 6. He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. God is the rewarder. Of those who diligently seek him. And that's what every single one of us have been doing the whole time we're there. Here is seeking God. And, um, you know, woo! is that normal or do I overexamine looking for demons? What did she say? Step two is done. Come on, Robert. See, guys, I wait. If you, you might not understand what Robert's saying, but this assignment that he was given today, the opportunity to grab a hold of it. Phew. There's anointing on this, brother. There's a serious anointing on this for you, man. There comes the yes, power of God is. right there. Yes, there There's a serious anointing on this. Wow. Phew. I got two stories to tell. You might say, Pastor, um, you all right tonight? I'm doing good. This good night. It's nice turning out a whole lot better than what it was. And uh, I, I like it. I mean, the thing of it is, I've been to the Holy Spirit Conference. I know what it's like there. I know the glory that's there. Friday night is usually the big night, though, isn't it? Would it be better to wait and go that night? No, that's no, no that's not. No. No, but... Um, Every night is a night, and they got different things that happen each night. And so we just got to watch it. Um, but we're going to start the watch party early because the watch, I mean, they, they're going to start at 6 o'clock Eastern, seven, 7 Eastern, which is 6 Central. And um, so if you're going to want to be a part of that, then we'll start a watch party tomorrow night at 7 o'clock um, Eastern time and just get in there and be a part of it. And um, it'll be live. It'll be a watch party right on Community of Faith. You'll just be able to hook up to it tomorrow night. So it'll be. It'll have already been running an hour before we get here. Um, so just as soon as you get the opportunity, get home, get on, then get connected with it, and it'll be a blessing to you. You will. You will enjoy what goes on. And um, it's just this is the place I've seen all my miracle signs and wonders inside a church building is right here at Dr. Barclays during these conferences, and it'll be a good thing. I believe a demon with a woman, a woman with a demon walked up to me one day at the store, but I was in shock at the things she was saying. 
but wanted to grab her and cast the demon out of her. Next time, do it. Just look right at her and say, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And if it starts talking to you, tell it to shut up. Shut up and come out. The greatest words you got to say to any demon, just shut up and come out. Silence. Come out. And just know you got more power in your in your clipped fingernails than that demon has in his whole being. Because you got Jesus on the inside of you. And you got the name that's above every name. And um, you got the power of the Holy Spirit living in you, whether you're speaking in tongues or not. And if a demon shows up and you're, mass, you're trying to cast him out, you might just start speaking in tongues. It's a good thing. But I want to tell two stories. I want to tell the story of when the, the barrel fell on me and crushed me on a dock. And then I want to tell the story of the day I cast the demon out on the Easter Sunday during the offering at church. Now, uh, these are cool, two cool stories about the power of God. When we get finished with this, we'll probably receive communion and be done a little early tonight. We're going to do whatever God gives us to do. But um, uh, we're just flowing with God, and this is a good thing. If we had a good praise team, we'd spend the rest of the night just uh, singing and praising and jumping and dancing. And uh, if any of you are finding good revival music that are live services, live worship services, not just one song or two songs, um, please send them over to us so we can see them because – when it comes to music focused on revival, it's interesting what is not there. Organized in a way that everybody can see it. However, I know it's there. I just haven't been finding much of it. So you guys see me. I keep posting that video of, of uh, Robert McD McDowell, William McDowell, man. I love that music. I love that album that that you're watching with us if you're watching it. And don't don't ever look at it and say, not that one again. Man, turn it on and say, Holy Ghost, get on top of me because that thing's got an anointing on it, man. That church, that church is an anointed, is anointed to see revival around the world. And uh, Pastor William McDowell, he's actually the pastor of that church there in, in Miami. And um Powerful, powerful church. If you're ever in Miami need a place to go to church, look them up. I forgot the name of it. Pastor William McDowell is, is the pastor of the church. But here we go. I'm going to tell you my stories. So when I first started getting into the uh, the depth of the Holy Spirit, I got connected with a church in uh, Grand Haven, Michigan. And um, no, actually in Granville, Michigan. I was living in Grand Haven. And um, I was working in a fiberglass factory. And we made these uh, fiberglass boat docks, which was a real complicated issue. And um, not at all. And the people <laughs> made millions of dollars who put it out. And if any of you got a good fiberglass factory somewhere, I'll tell you what, we could do the same thing and make some serious money because these things were amazing that they were building. I would. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So in the fiberglass factory, we had chopping machines. You put a, a, a spool of fiberglass on it, and then you had the resin and the catalyst there. And uh, somebody would spray it on the wood, and then we'd take a roll roll it out. And, um, of course, the overspray of that chop gun uh, sprayed all over the floor, and the wheels of the cart would get um, all that fiberglass um, chop all over the wheels, and then we'd have to pick it up. And, and take a hammer and chisel it off. And that's just the way it worked there because it wasn't a very cl clean place to work. Uh, but they made a lot of money. So uh, we'd just take three-quarter inch plywood, stack them together, nail them together, and then spray fiberglass on it. And then just roll out the air and wait till it hardened and route to the top and flip it over, do the same thing, and you got a boat dock. It was a pretty amazing situation. So... On the cart would be a barrel of resin and a barrel of uh, kicker. 
uh, just a little bin of kicker. And you didn't ever pick that up with a forklift when the barrel was full. And so one day, I don't know, somebody just in a rush put a strap around it and hooked it up to the overhead crane and picked it up off the floor so we could start chipping it off. And I, we're chipping on it. And uh, nobody fastened that barrel down. And the barrel come off the cart. A brand new barrel just opened, 540-pound barrel, come off of that cart and hit me across my midsection up against the dock and pinned me. And then, of course, the barrel fell down and rolled away. Well, you know, everybody just absolutely freaked right out. I jumped up off, off the floor and um, just jumped up and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there will not be any problem with me and my body and my back ever another day of my life. I was just learning the walk of faith. Hey, bless you, Julian Bamala. We love you guys. Thanks for being a part of the community of faith with us. May God richly bless you guys. God bless Malaysia. God bless Julian and Vamala. God bless you. And may God bless America. So, I jumped up, just yelled, hey, in the name of Jesus, I'll never have a problem. And uh, they're like, dude, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Why? They're like, that barrel just fell on you. I'm like, I'm all right. Then they're looking at me like, who is this guy? You know? <laughs> and we just went back to work. And the boss came up, like, you all right, man? You need to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, I ain't going to no hospital. I'm all right. I use the name of Jesus. They all just look at you like, all right, you know. And uh, so then another boss came out. Are you all right? I'm like, you guys, just leave me alone. I'm all right. I'm going to just keep working. If that's all right with everybody else, please, you know. And I never had a problem with it. A 540-pound barrel of resin fell off a cart on top of me and pinned me across my midsection to that dock. And um, didn't have no problem. Now, check it out. I get to church on Sunday night and there's a guest speaker. And that guest speaker, when he's done preaching, says, you know, by the Holy Spirit, I can tell that somebody here um, had some kind of accident this week where you were pinned up against a dock with a barrel. The guy said that out of his mouth. I just about walked on pew, walking on water, man. I'm like, are you kidding me? And off I went. I went right up to the front. He's like, that's you? I'm like, yeah, that's me. So he asked me a little bit. I told him a little bit. He goes, that's amazing. He's like, you're not having any pain? I'm like, no, but pray for him. <laughs> Amen? I mean, if, if God Almighty spoke to that guy and called that out, that was an infallible proof for me to see that the Spirit of God spoke to somebody that did not know me from Adam and told my whole story. Wait, it's not just for preachers. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Don't worry, I got another story to tell. I might have like three. You never know. <laughs> I thought we was going to get done early, but it's starting to look like it. we might just end right on time. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's go down to um, uh, verse 4 through 11. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. 
There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, you think about that man who, who, who by a gift of the Spirit, said somebody here got crushed by, by a barrel on a dock this week. How does that profit everybody? When I jump up out of my seat and immediately run down there to the platform, everybody in the church is like, pay attention to this right here. Let's see what this is all about. Don't worry. We got the moderators on it. It may already be a moderator that has it done. Oh, maybe. See, that's a, that, that profits the whole body when that happens. Everybody in the whole church is encouraged. When they hear me, and that night it was me, when they hear that, yes, that happened to me, that now validates what that man just preached. And that's a sign and a wonder. Um, that, that person's been dealt with. Make sure you refresh your page, and they'll be gone off of your page where you won't be able to see them. Ready? Watch this. Verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a word of knowledge. To another, by the same Spirit. <laughs> I'll get this right. Through the same Spirit. Nine. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Sometimes you'll just have a great increased level of faith. It's a gift of the Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Sometimes you, sometimes it's just you lay hands on the sick and they recover. And then sometimes it's the gift of healing. It's the gift of healing. Do they disappear? Yeah. All right. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. To another different kind of tongues. To another the interpretation of those tongues. Those two tongues are in public. All right. Eleven. But one in the same spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. Every now and then you'll hear me say. Well you saw me say it just a minute ago. I said everybody say out loud. Get out of this person now. What was that? That is a gift of the Spirit, God revealing to me that somebody needed to be set free from a spirit, and it was happening right here in the program. And when I said that, and you said that, all of us moved by the Spirit of God in an effort of setting that per person free, and that is to the profit of all. Every one of you that said that, you are operating in the gifts of miracles, maybe the gifts of healing, maybe that's it, or... Most importantly, it was the, the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you and me and causing that thing to come to pass like it needed to come to pass. You just saw it? You saw it tonight on this program. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 happened right in front of your eyes. Pastor, I thought when the gifts of the Spirit happened that everything went crazy. Well, sometimes that happens. But sometimes we just say what it is, everybody speaks it, it's done, and we move on. God didn't say make a sideshow out of casting a demon out. Yeah. He didn't. And and listen, I like it when they have cameras so you can see. I like to see it. But there's a whole bunch of that that's become a sideshow. And there's no value in that. Having a sideshow about the power of God, then, then we minimize it. And then people begin to mock it. And especially when people try to fake it. Don't fake God. Can you imagine what's going to happen when you get to heaven and you, you've been faking God? You're going to have a time before the throne that you really didn't want to be a part of. In any sense of the word. 
Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray for Chris, uh, Timmer, and um, Karen, and the family. And we declare, house, come to them now. Somebody say, a house, come now. House, come now. House deal, come to Chris and Karen Timmer now in the mighty name of Jesus. Exactly what they need and exactly the best place and exactly the best school for the kids to grow up in. Yeah. And the most amazing thing that has ever happened for our brother and sister yet in their life in Jesus' mighty name. Say it with me. It is done. It is done. Now see, that is a gift of the spirit that I just spoke in. That is a gift of a special kind of faith. That's what that could be. That can also be a gift of prophecy. That can also be the gift of, where did they go? The, the gift of wisdom. And most of all, it's you and I as believers standing in the power of the Holy Ghost saying, thy kingdom come to this earth for our brother Chris making that in Jesus. Don't worry. You don't have to name what the gift is you're flowing in. You don't have to stand before people and say, now I have a gift of the word of wisdom. No. Say the words the Holy Ghost gave you. And if somebody wants to describe what kind of gift it is, well, then hallelujah. But most of all, get the person free. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, what was the story I was telling you? I was telling you a story about getting free and that guy praying for me. He prayed for me. That was the same night the lady's foot grew. That was the same night. So I was having a whole lot of hallelujah happening that night. I was. I was just like, man, I, this is awesome. This is God. This is amazing. This is the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing the book of Acts come to pass right in front of my eye in my own life. I'm my own body. And guys, I've never had a problem with my back in my whole life. Never have a problem. 500-pound barrel crushed me up against the dock. Probably fell. 500-pound barrel probably fell three feet up in the air above me and, and pinned me to that dock. And it's like, of course, I'm a tither, and uh, yeah. I believe in angels. So um, I had all kinds of insurance around me. Amen. Now let's talk about the um, let's talk about casting out the demon. Want to do that? Yes. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> the rest of the story tonight is going to be brought to you by Sister Leanne. <laughs> All right. So. Um, um, this would have been Valentine's Day. Um, I don't know, 2012 or something. Maybe 2010. I don't know. It was back to the ways. And there was a young man that he was the first guy that introduced me to blog talk radio. And, uh, Ended up giving me his blog talk radio channel. Just gave it to me and just put it in my email address. And, and uh, on we went. But his grandpa was dying and he asked me if I would do the funeral. And I said, yeah, I would. He was a Korean War veteran. So being in, this, in the Patriot Guard Riders, it would have been 2012. That's when it would have been. Because I wasn't state captain. All right. We found a date. And... Uh, but being a Patriot Guard, you know, we, we still had a flag line for him. And the Patriot Guard riders always gave a flag to a veteran. I mean, a plaque to him. Now watch this story. So at the day of the funeral, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the plaque. It didn't get to us in time. The mail, you know, who knows, whatever. It didn't get there. And so I had met with the family before and said, you know, I would really like to be able to pre present this plaque to all of you at the same time. And the grandma, the, the man's wife, the grandma said, well, we'll all come to your church on Easter Sunday and you can present it to us there. Well, she's a Holy Ghost grandma knowing I got some kids that ain't in church and I just got all my kids in church to watch grandpa get on her. <laughs> and I'm standing there thinking, now that is a really smart lady yes, right there. That's a <laughs> smart lady. Bless you, Kelly. Um, 
if you got a problem of somebody beating you, we'll come, we'll come help you. Just give us some names and we'll, we'll be glad to be right there. We love you and we call your sleep blessed, Kelly. Amen. We call your sleep blessed in Jesus' mighty name. So we're at the funeral. The funeral's finished. It was, it was, um, it was more of a memorial service. He'd lived a full life and, and uh, he'd been suffering from uh, dementia or something. Anyways, he would been suffering. So he went to heaven. Everybody knew he was in heaven. And um, at the end of the service, I went back in the back room and I got my hat and I got my overcoat. I was wearing a suit. Uh, unusual to me, but I was wearing a suit. When I walked out of the room, I kind of stood next to his wife. And then at one point she turned and looked at me and she goes, it's you. It's you. She's, she's like, she's yelling this at me. And I'm like, what's up? What's happening, Mary? She goes, uh, it's you. I saw you in a dream. And I'm like, my eyes get real big. I'm like, you saw me in a dream? She goes, yeah, I saw you in a dream. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. She said, you were wearing that hat and that coat, and it's you. I'm like, well, what's the dream? She said, uh, I was in a city. I don't know where. I was on the, I was walking on the sidewalk. And I was waiting for somebody or something. And was standing up against the building. And this wicked, nasty hand of cloth came around the corner of the building and was trying to grab them claws into her. And she said, I was screaming, but I couldn't scream loud enough for anybody to hear it. And she said, I was afraid it was going to get me. And she said, and then you walked up. I'm like, really? She said, yeah, it's you. It's your face. It's, it's your hair. It's that hat. It's that coat. It's you. I said, well, isn't that interesting? What did I do? She said, you took authority over that hand and it left. I'm like, well, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. I, I never knew I was in people's dreams. <laughs> I don't know how you get Scaring in people's dreams. Demons. All right. Scaring off demons. I like that. Somebody shout glory or something. Glory. Could you like unpost or post something for me? So, or unpin so I can see. Um, I have eyes to see and ears to hear. And I'm like, well, that is amazing. And so she was talking a little bit. Then she turned around to me and she goes, what are you saving me from? I'm like, what? She goes, in that dream, you saved me from them, them, them claws. What is it? I mean, uh, uh, all of a sudden you're like, um, listen, it don't matter if your tongues are fancy, just get something up. I said, well, let's pray for a minute. Jesus, and I just said the name. I just said Jesus, and immediately just came to me by the Spirit, right? Just like that. I said, he's saving you from grief. I'm saving you from grief. Because the enemy would try to kill you right now. You're the paternal mother here of all this family, and the enemy wants to take you out by grief because you loved your husband so much. She goes, wow, you're right. Pray. <laughs> she's a she's a cool lady. Pray. So I prayed over it. All right. Now you ain't you ain't heard the best part of this dream yet, guys. You remember the best part? After a while, we got talking about it. And uh I said, um, you know, Mary, when did you dream this? And she said, You're not gonna believe this. I said, well, I'm a believer, so I guarantee you I'm a believer. She said, probably 1962. I said, Mary, I wasn't even alive then. She said, I don't care. Mm -hmm. That was you in that dream. I dreamed it. And she said, I dreamed it in like 1962. Before I was ever born, she saw me. Now, that'll mess with your mind. Yeah. Wait, that'll make your spirit shout, glory be to God. <laughs> it's 
somewhere I got to have comments that work because there's still not. Yeah. How about now? No, I, you need to let me do it. Oh, please, please. No, it's not working with you. All right. So I'm like, man, that's pretty wow. Before I was ever born, I mean, a dream. She goes, I don't know what else to tell you, preacher. It was you. It was you. I know it was you. So now they're, now the whole family's coming to Easter Sunday service. And uh, they show up. And I don't know. There's about 25 of them, I think. Because they all loved their pa. He was a, everybody loved their, the dad. He was a, he was a, a wonderful grandpa to them all. And they all loved him. So they had, they had grandchildren, great grandchildren, probably great, great grandchildren. Who knows? But uh, they were all there in the service. And so we had praise and worship. And I told them, I said, once the offering's done, then I will present the plaque to them. And uh, so during the offering, one of the daughters brings up one of her nieces to me and says, Pastor, we're going to have to leave because she feels sick like she's going to puke. And I looked at her and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I told her. She was all bent over, holding her stomach. I said, uh, stand up here and look at me. Now, pay attention. This is a demon casting out story. This is a good lesson for some of you. Pay attention. I said, stand up here and look at me. Because you got to look in people's eyes. Because you can see the demon. If they're demon possessed, you'll see the demon. Eyes. Because they won't look human. So she stood up. And she's like, I, 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 I. I'm like, wow. Sure glad you showed up at Easter Sunday in my church. And I just said, come out of here right now in the name of Jesus. And it's like, I'm like, no, shut up and come out now. And uh, and it's it. And so then I laid hands on her. You don't be afraid of a demon. It can't get in you. You got the spirit of God inside of you. I let hands on I'm like, in the name of Jesus. And down she went on the ground. And she's rolling around. And I'm like, you shut up and come out. You shut up and come out. And then all of a sudden, she went to peace. And the demon came up. There really isn't anything to it. Say it with me. Shut up and come out. Shut up and come out. That's 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 all. That's all. Pastor, why do you say shut up? Well, that's gonna want to talk and make noise and everything else. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it's gonna want to try to put you in fear. Yeah. But ain't no fear. Sh just say it. Shut up and come out. Now. What I love about this community of faith is I told you the story a long time ago. So any of you old timers, you already had this good instruction from me at the beginning. Once we started flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit and on the program, um, I told you the story so that all of you would have inside of your weapon belt, shut up and come out. Oh, yeah, I'm young. I'm just young. I'm only I was born in 63, man. Uh, Fellas, I'm just a young buck. I'm not even old. I'm not even old at all. I'm just a young guy. Amen. 60's only halfway through. Um, got another one there. Uh, 60's only halfway through. And um, thank God, there ain't no double power on the face of the earth. No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. The name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything anybody can ever imagine or even drink or think or sing or anything. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, here we go. Why did you tell us these stories, Pastor? Because over here it says, help every believer move from glory to glory, faith to faith, and grace to grace. Well, what's that do, Pastor? That that's exactly what we just did right there. And we deleted that guy out of this page and blocked him just like that. If he's still 
if you can still see his comment, then just refresh your page and um, it'll be gone. The demons make make a person's face look different. Yeah, well. Yeah. And it'll make their voice weird. And it causes people, some people to say they're going to get sick to their stomach. But don't even let it puke. Don't even let it. Just say, no, you don't. Get out now. And leave none of yourself behind. You know, here's the cool thing about this. Shut up and come out and take all your stuff with you. I got to tell you another demon story. Can I tell another demon story before we get into communion? Okay. All right, I will. I thank you. Appreciate it. I don't, I wasn't there. So uh, I can't tell you the story like he told it. And um, I, if you ever hear Brother Summer, I'll tell the story. I want you to know he's telling the story the right way. My best to uh, recant to you what I heard him say. But he was in the Philippines one time. Had They were having powerful services everywhere. Dr. Summer all went. Demons manifest. He cast them out. And, um. He had every kind of manifestation you could ever imagine. That one demon down there in Billy Bad Prison in um, the Philippines took him three days to cast that demon out. Wow. Yeah, really? three days. And um, that launched him into a, a nationwide ministry where he was recognized by everybody in the nation. ABC, NBC, and CBS uh, broadcast that live. Uh, and that was back in the 60s sometime. But you can actually go see that. It's called Bitten by Devils. That's the name of the of the of the book. And the, there's actually a video, and um, it's quite a story. But anyways, he's there in the Philippines somewhere, in a village, or I don't know. He was. I won't. I won't name a nation. Having powerful services, he's back at his room. He's sleeping in his bed at night, and he wakes up and feels the bed vibrating. And he goes, you foul devil, get out of here. Hi, Chris. Good to have you with us tonight. Good to have you with us, Chris. He said, you foul devil, get out of my room. And he said, the bed stopped shaking and the presence of the devil left. And he said, no, you wait. You come back here and move my bed up against the wall where it belongs. Devil come back in, move the bed back where it was belong. And he's like, get out and stay out all week long. I don't want nothing to do with you. Well, Pastor, you can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And let's just grab that verse before we get into communion. And then we'll take communion together and be done for tonight. I think this has been a good night. How many of you feel like this has been a good night? Hallelujah. 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 Um, Luke, no, yeah, Luke 10, uh, 17 through 20. Luke 10, 17 through 20. Good to have you guys with us. All of you on YouTube, welcome. It's got a good group of folks over there. Um, Always remember, if you sign in and uh, tell us where you're from, we're really glad that. Uh, thank you, Robert, for your help, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother. Now, um, Luke 10, 17. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Say this with me. Even the demons, Even the demons are subject to me, subject to in, me. Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Now, remember, these disciples are before Pentecost. They're before the cross. They're not even born again. You can't be born again yet. Because Jesus hasn't died. Their sins could be forgiven because Jesus would say, your sins be forgiven you. That's why the Pharisees hated him because they're like, oh, you can't forgive sins. And yet Jesus said, whoever sins you remit, they'll be remitted. And the father taught him that. 
All right. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that that just brought up ten questions, but it's all right. Let's keep reading. Eighteen, he Jesus said, "I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven." Jesus was there. I think Jesus was the one that drop kicked him. All right. Nineteen, behold, I gave you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. Say it with me. All the power. All the power. All the power. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So if you have power over all the power of the enemy, then that means you have power over all the power of the enemy. Don't let any enemy power overwhelm you. You bind it in the name of Jesus. You cast it away from you in the name of Jesus and you loose the angels of the Lord and all of the spiritual effect you have. If you're a tither, call on your tithe. If you're a giver, call on your giving. If you if you are covered with the blood of Jesus, well, you're going to be. So then that means you, you pull the blood of Jesus. You use the name of Jesus. You get the angels of the Lord because all of that is your insulation. All of that is your power that causes you to stand in victory every time you stand up. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ of men. In the name of Jesus. Did I finish all of my stories, love? Say it. I have power over all the power of the enemy. Power over all the power of the enemy. Say it. I right now, in my spiritual condition, in what I know about God, filled with the Holy Spirit, I have power over all the power of the devil. All of it. And nothing can by any means hurt you. Amen. Say it with me, nothing. nothing. Now, if you was with us today at, at noon, we were talking about Peter getting shook loose of the guards. My my own personal belief, although, you know, I wasn't there to video record it, so I don't have pictures to prove it. However, for those of you who demand absolute accuracy in the things of God, However, um, I believe that the um, the guards were wide awake. I, I believe that they were looking around. Really? I believe Peter was like this in front of their eyes. I that's my own personal belief. I don't have no verses to back it up, but that's how God operates. Elijah, when he prayed for blindness, marched that whole army blind. They couldn't see it was Elijah. Elisha, he marched that whole army right over to the enemy. Well, they weren't blind because they had the ability to see. I mean, you know, you know how difficult it is to march a group of soldiers if they're all blind? You ain't going nowhere. You're going to take one step and everybody's going to be falling all over everybody. That's my own personal opinion. Isn't it something that Peter's putting these sandals on going, I can't believe these guys. Wait, wait, I do believe. I do believe. I, Angel, I believe. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like Zachariah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen talking last night about Zachariah being mute. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't want that. I believe. See, he's given us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us in any way. Amen. Can I get an amen from anybody? Mm -hmm. Just been a good night. It's been a great night. Wait, just before we do communion, I want to show it to you one more time.
Yeah. No, that one's got too much personal stuff. All right. There we go. Let's close with, with prayer this part, and we're going to go into communion. You ready? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you right now tonight. Lord, bless the community of faith. Bless the community of faith. Bless each of these believers. Help every one of us to find a place here. Help every one of us to stand strong in you. And thank you for the greatest Bible college experience we've ever had. Information that can be used today to change our life today so we can go and help other people and see their lives changed today. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for every person, those that are public and we know who they are, and those who are not public. May they have courage and hope and strength and life. And may they see their place yeah. and come on and be a part and be a blessing for what you do, Lord. We will thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Here we go. Covenant worship. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Wow. My Bible didn't open up to that spot exactly. Here we go. Are you ready for new covenant worship? Yes. I am. Thank you for being here with us. Checking YouTube, everything fine on the YouTube front. Here we go. First Corinthians eleven twenty three, for I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it and he said, "Take." Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, Drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat the bread, and as often as you drink this cup, <laughs> you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For verse 31, if you would judge yourselves, you would not be judged. Now, while I was reading verse 26 to you, I saw two, I saw two demon people going, oh my God, they're doing the communion again. Hey, just so you know, we love the blood of Jesus. We know the power of the blood of Jesus. And I command right now in the realm of the spirit, wherever you are that's listening, trying to cause trouble, I command that devil to come out of you now in the name of Jesus. Right now. And you can think you can sit there and make, make a problem, but you're just making a greater abundance 
and a greater blessing for this ministry and what we're doing. And we thank you for that. Because with your persecution comes a hundredfold return. And you're just filling the accounts of all the folks. Their debts are paid. All their bills are paid. Driving new cars and new houses and blessed by God. And we have power over all your power. And nothing that you do has any power over us. And we declare an infallible proof happened to you in your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy according to the spirit of almighty God. <laughs> Everybody say it. It is done. It is done. It is done. First John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in this. That you may have boldness in the day of judgment. We have boldness. They have fear. We have boldness because we've received the blood of Jesus. Because as he is, so are we in this world. How can it be, Pastor? Because he lives in you. That's why the persecution is. Because they see Jesus in you. Somebody shout. They see Jesus in see me. Jesus in me. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now, why did you add them verses, Pastor? Because there's a whole lot of people that come to communion and they're full of fear. Hold it. If you got the love of God, then you got the love of Jesus. Perfect love casts that fear. There's no fear of receiving. They see Jesus in me. Amen, Chris. Amen, Sunday. That's awesome. We love having you guys with us. There's no fear. Don't run from Father. Run to him. Don't run away from the blood. Run to it. Jesus did not give his life so you can run in fear. Amen. He gave his life so all fear would be gone. And you would have boldness in the day of judgment because you're already going to have judged yourself. We read it every night. Verse 31. Got to just love God. I love this. I'm so glad you guys helped us do this. Now, let's pray a prayer of salvation. Prayer of rededication. You ready? This is you getting you right with God so that you're able to receive communion elements. Some of you are already born again and you're just sitting there looking at me like, I don't know whether I can receive this with you or not. If you're a part of the body of Christ, then you can receive the body of Christ. And anyone who tells you they, they can't just have a bunch of religious indoctrinations that they refuse to get over. And I'll challenge them if they refuse that it's all about membership. And that's not God. That's manipulation. Said that during communion even. Ready? Pray this prayer with me. Father God. Father God. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I come to you now. I come to you now. I know I need Jesus. I know I need Jesus. In every part of my life. In every part of my life. And according to John chapter 1. And according to John chapter 1. When I receive you. When I receive you. Into my life Jesus. Into my life Jesus. You give me the power. You give me the power to become a child of God. To become a child of God. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. And I receive you now. And I receive you now. Into every part of my life. Into every part of my life. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Do this. Take your hands. Make a big pile of your sin and say, there's all my sin, Jesus. There's all my sin, Jesus. Reach up and receive all of his righteousness. I yeah, just say, it. I receive all of your righteousness, filling my life. Filling my life. That's just that beautiful, warm, honey, mm -hmm. perfect holiness and clean. May everyone receive the manifestation, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly name. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, high five. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You made the right choice. We're glad to have you with us. This is what the kingdom of God looks like, us. This is what the family of God looks like, all these people that's with us. It's a great family. You found the right place. Stick around. Now, in that one prayer, you went from darkness to light in one prayer. You went from fear to faith in one prayer right now. You went from your sin, which you can't beat, because you have no human power to do it, to Jesus' righteousness, which not only obliterates it, purges you, and is never remembered again another day. In that prayer... You literally became adopted into the family of God. Jesus is your elder brother and God is your father. You have an inheritance that fades not away and is incorruptible. <laughs> you might say, preacher, that's a whole lot in one time. Yeah, it is. But that's our God. He does the exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. According to the power that works. In so. Uh, they put my email address and the, and the, and the uh, web page there. And I encourage you to get in contact with me. Say, tell me your story. Ask me a question. Tell me how you got saved. Share it with somebody. You got to share it with somebody. Share it with me. All right. I believe every believer should have an email address of a pastor or a pastoral staff where they can get their questions answered and, and learn to walk with God. You might be somebody that's a part of the community of faith for a long time and say, Pastor, I don't know about some of the stuff you teach. Well, then send me an email. I will help you understand and help you grow in God. That is my assignment on this earth under God Almighty. And I'm going to tell you right now, I thoroughly enjoy doing it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I got 10 verses I want to send you that will help you stabilize your Christian life, whether you're a brand new believer or you've been around the kingdom for a long time. Send an email. I'll email you if you email me. And if you don't email me, I won't email you. Unless you want me to send you 10 or 15 emails a day, then I'll find something to send you. <laughs> we love you. And our place is to help you walk with God. Amen. You're now ready to receive the communion elements. So go, go quick. Grab you some water and bread, juice and bread, whatever you got. One guy had Gatorade and some cheeses. That works too. And then we'll pray over these elements and we'll receive them in Jesus' mighty name. Long time before the 92nd lady. Long time. Not done yet. Hey. <laughs> you ready? Let's pray over our elements. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded for my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised for my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement for my peace. For my peace is on you, Lord. Is on you, Lord. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in in my mind, my will, and my emotions. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body, Jesus. From your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. Within my community. Within my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive 
his broken body together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that there was no ropes or chains that kept you bound to that whipping post. Just your desire to see us free. And we thank you. And now we lift up the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant. Say this with me, by the blood. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have and all things have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague. Every plague. Has to pass over. Has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly. To the throne room of grace. To the throne room. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down in my life. Is cast down in my life. And there's no more condemnation. And there's no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive the juice together. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then the Bible says. That they sang a hymn. And uh, we like to sing around here. And as you can tell from Sister Mary Pastor Rick, I have a beautiful voice and it's very soothing to her. <laughs> Love you, Mary. You're a blessing to us, Mary. <laughs> but uh, we like to sing a song about the blood of Jesus. We love the blood because uh, it's the blessing. It's the blood of the new covenant. And it was it was shed one time. And it was shed for every person. And it's a better covenant. It's better promises. And the most perfect lamb. The lamb of God. So let's sing the blood of Jesus song. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to 
day it will never lose its power it removes my doubts and wipes out my fears and it dries all my tears the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it will never lose it will never lose it will never lose its power i like that song because it's an oldie but a goodie and it's about the blood of jesus amen, amen. shout it thank god for the blood thank there's a really good one about that. Thank God for the blood. Something about that. No, there's another one. There's another one. The brothers sing. And they sing it really good. And I don't sing it good yet, but I'm learning it. All right. But I want to sing No Place I'd Rather Be. Ready? No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love with people we love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love with people we love. Start a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Start a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love with people we love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love with people we love. Start a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Start a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Than here in your love with people we love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. 
than here in your love with people we love. Woo! Woo! We, we can just about do that in harmony. <laughs> you guys never heard a ooh like that before, did you? <laughs> Sunday and Chris, we love you guys. Everybody on, on, on uh, YouTube, thanks for being there. You guys are a great group of people. Here we go. This is our time to make our benediction from the word of God. Our blessing on you. Watch this. I'm going to add another one tonight that we've not done before. Romans chapter 16, verse 25 through 27. Ready? Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. This is good, isn't it? According to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. To God alone be wise. Huh? To God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen and amen. And now Ephesians Chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. What did I miss? Hmm? I'm wondering where I got this list from. I just put closing prison and it's Colossians and Jude. Oh. I don't have Ephesians in there. I need to update my closing prayer thing. Yep. You just got to update for the body of Christ right there. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to what I'm praying over you. I'm serious. I'm serious about this. I'm praying this over you guys. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, saying, we, we all got the same Father. We all got the same Father. I love it. I love it. I love it. That he would grant you and me According to the riches of his glory. If you haven't figured that out, that's really big. To be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Say it. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of God, the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all fullness of God. Verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all you can ask or think, according to the power that is working in you right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. To all generations. How many generations? Oh. All. Forever and ever. Amen. amen. Jude. 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy. Why you got exceeding joy? Because you didn't have the righteousness. And now you got it. Say it. I received Jesus righteousness. I Jesus. 25. To God our Savior who alone is wise glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever 
amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and hallelujah christian sunday welcome thank you god bless you uh sister shannon brother mike rebecca john boy mary allen <laughs> the brady bunch wilma brother robert molderman Dan and Gwen, Dave and Gwen. The list goes on. There's many of you. There's a bunch we don't see, but we want to see you. So even if you don't want your name known publicly, shoot us a letter. Shoot us an email and say, hey, Pastor, just want you to know we're listening. And it'll be a blessing to you. And it'll be a blessing to us in Jesus' mighty name. Well, guess that's all we got. Is that, is that all we got, love? Yes. Anybody got to say anything else? Anybody want to come on and sing us a song? Anybody want to sing us a song? Because we would love that. The 92nd lady isn't for a little while yet. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe that's it. See you all tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. We love you guys. Thank, Thank you, Robert. Here. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I love you, man. Rebecca, we're glad you're in our family. I love being close to our Father and having Jesus with me in my heart every day. Good night. May the lugs, 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 oh, Jesus. May the hugs and love of the Father be with you. And maybe he's got some good lugs for you, too. So that's all right, too. <laughs> or something. I don't have a problem if you got some lugs from God. That's a good thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. See you guys soon. Just what we always say. We love you. And, and God, God loves, you. loves you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.